Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the day two of our bootcamp, Cloud Security Practitioner. Okay, so we are here and we are going to start. I think so. There was, this was our agenda for the day one, where we talked about the introduction to the cloud and the demo of some cloud resources. So yesterday, I remember very clearly. Uh, oh, so we started with something like evaluation of technology, how technology has evolved over the time. So I was giving you the idea that what is going to happen and how things are going to happen over here then we talked about the cloud computing a general definition layman definition then we start talking about the things which was regarding the your you know sp800 145 where we were talking about the different you know nist definition of cloud computing and how sp800 145 has defined your cloud computing and then how iso iec 1778 uh, it has defined the cloud computing overview and its vocabulary now you know we were seeing that this one uh, iso was going on to the more granular level over there and then we have jumped into the more onto the essential part so uh, before moving forward remember guys uh, again today you know i will be mentioning this thing uh, you know a bit right so remember these five essential characteristics yesterday which we have talked about on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, you know, rapid elasticity, and your measured service. So these were the five impact of the cloud. So when we were talking, we are going to talk about the your security as a service. There again, it is going to be used. You know, then we talked about the different models that is defined in the NIST, and then the deployment model as well. Then we talked about how ISO IEC 17788 has defined your cloud and then moving ahead we were talking about IES pass and then there was the different kind of services that has been defined we talked about the you know how you will be going with your you know if you have to select your uh, cloud service provider on which criteria you will be you know uh, going to manage them okay or balance them or judge kind of a judging them right so that is something that is going to be there then we talked about public cloud public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud community cloud compare them advantages we were talking about opex capex infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service this is something what we have done and towards the end we were talking about this you know in the theory part we were talking about the shared responsibility model over here now after that we have jumped into the demonstration of the cloud itself and if i just try to remember over here i am taking you to the my portal so here if you will see that this was the machine i think i let it run uh, throughout oh no i stopped this that's a good thing then right so this was the machine that what we have created here and this is how it was you know it was there i have stopped it uh, this was our csp101 which we have created and we were dealing with this one so with this one we have deployed you know this machine was deployed onto this virtual network csp webinar and not only that i remember yesterday we created a vnet as well virtual network 101 okay in the east us okay at that time it was not readable so later you can use this one it was having the different subnets as well right so you know we have created subnet 0 subnet 1 as well and then we have accessed this through the rdp connection so this is something that what we have done in the whole yesterday's session right so this was the your yesterday's session and again today we are going to start with the you know what we have in the store for the you know day two so uh, let me you know just show you the agenda for the day two so today we are going to talk about you know uh, mainly two things one is the security operation in the cloud okay and then there is going to be the managing the cloud security and risk okay these two things we are going to have over here so let me just tell you we will be talking about what is security as a service how logging it is going to you know, work in the your cloud so we'll be talking about that as well so these things we are going to talk about and we will be talking about incident response talking about erm and governance in cloud audit management in cloud and the you know compliance and audit and the legal issue now you can see that these topic if i will be deep diving in any of the topic right even security as a service uh, 
any topic could be you know could can uh, can go more than two hours very easily and you will be thinking how in the two hours we are going to cover them so let me tell you a friend that we are going to get a gist of all these things right that what it is uh, what are the some different framework that has been defined here okay so kind of a getting an overview of these things we will be uh, in this particular session now as i was giving you the fair warning in the very beginning that these things many of candidate who are very specifically work, specifically working very technically they feel that you know when you start talking about uh, this is my personal experience because i have taken uh, the uh, classroom sessions as well you know and the different training sessions all, all around the globe and i have seen you know as soon as you jump into these kind of a topic everyone start yawning right so they start getting you know that a boost a dose of a theory over there so we will try to make it the interesting one or a simple one in the simple tones right then towards the end i want to give you the some time for the career guidance and q a so this will really we'll be doing it the of the you know after we will be pausing the recording then we'll be doing this kind of a thing you can bring out your questions and we can just you know talk about this thing as well now so let's just start with the your uh, you know today's agenda again and you know start with the very first thing which is security operation in cloud so in the security operation is cloud we are going to talk about security as a service how logging it work is in the cloud and incident response how incident response it work in the cloud as well so these things are going to be in our kind of a target or this will be our motive over here that what we have to look so let's just start with this so first of all what we will do uh, is when we are talking about the you know security operations in cloud so uh, there is going to be the you know, uh, when you have a cloud cloud is what whatever up to now you were doing in your on prem infrastructure that is moved into the cloud location whole infrastructure is moved towards the cloud location so what you are having nowadays is uh, you know that need of security it doesn't go anywhere you require multiple of your security operation still to till this date you require multiple of the security operation to handle now you know, your traditional solution that we used to have in your on-prem they are not going to work as it is in the cloud so we have to you know change the bit of the thing and very simple example of security operation is cloud is going to be the uh, your let's just take an example of IAM identity and access management. Okay, so IAM solution So your traditional active directory that you used to have in the your cloud, you know in your uh, on-premise it has been upgraded onto the your uh, It has been upgraded onto your cloud like a simple example I will be giving So I think most of you guys must have heard about the thing like the Azure Active Directory which we call the AAD having a lot of features just like your uh, on-prem AD now this has been you know this has the option of going with the your hybrid AD so in here you can you know connect your on-prem AD with this particular Azure Active Directory and you will have that you know this will be giving you the features of you know that you don't have to go ahead and you don't have to you know again create the duplicate identity in the cloud as well and in here as well now if you have the Microsoft 365 products you want to use some identity with that you want to use it on the Azure you can use that over there as well so all things will be controlled with the you know same same single place and you know uh, one new uh, update that i just got yesterday itself that microsoft uh, is doing what this azure ad will be part of the, the microsoft entra so although i haven't done my complete research on this one but this is one notification that i got yesterday so this week i'll be reading about this that what this thing is going to be you know, this whole thing is going to be about what this service is going to work but this is one example not only that so our whole infrastructure is here now what i want is you know uh, i have deployed my resources in the cloud it doesn't mean that it you know it is now secure from all threat in the world no so that whole infrastructure can be subjected to the multiple attacks and to 
get to know about any suspicious activity that is happening in my cloud. It might be a brute force attack. It might be a privilege escalation attack. What I want to know is I want to know about them. I want to get myself alerted for the same. So how I can do that is when I will be able to go ahead and work with the you know get the locks that what is happening because locks is the one mean to keep your eyes on the cloud that what is happening over there and that's why what we are going to do is you know we will be keeping an eye over for the same thing that how we can collect the logs how we will make sense of the logs and you know uh, just like you know we used to have sim tools so now your sim tools are also moving on to the cloud cloud based sim tool so this is something that keep happening again and again so we will be looking for these kind of the things okay so when we will be start talking about we will be talking about the you know how the instant response is going to work in the cloud and how things is going to be over this one so first of all what we are going to do you know talk about because what we have to do uh, if there is any incident that is generated now how those incident are going to happen or, or handle okay in the cloud this is something that most of us are going to be worried about that how these things are going to be handled in particular scenario so first we will be looking into the your accepted incident response framework so what we have to do we do not need to create some new framework incident response framework or incident response process by ourselves for our cloud solution because there are well, plenty of your different different frameworks from which you can easily select okay so there are multiple except you know, uh, multiple frameworks from which you can uh, you know, use for your own incident response and i think most of uh, these you might be familiar with you must have heard about these incident response framework so if we will be talking about for example that what we have we have the nest special publication 861 we have the ISO IEC 27035 and we have Anisa's your cloud. Okay, so these things we are having over here. Now, what we are doing here is let me just start with the Anisa. That what your E N I S A Anisa. I'm just calling it in the short form Anisa. So what Anisa incident response is telling you, right? So with the Anisa, what we have first thing after any incident that happened so first thing the area of concern for anisa is the focus on the people's safety first okay so whenever there is an incident as an aftermath of that incident our primary concern is going to be keep the people safe right so what we have to do we will be you know we will be needing to uh, you know find out that okay which if there is a let's say for example any physical or you know uh, or any natural disaster in that case we will be looking for the you know what are our safe site right how we can access those safe site so where we can gather people okay in case of something where we can you know what will be a safe place where we can gather people you know uh, after that incident we will be making sure every person is secure and then we'll be thinking about the information and the you know, your physical performance you know, physical premise as well so it is also going to include about you know, few simple things like how we can get the first aid how you how you are going to mobilize the first aid itself and we are talking about this uh, same thing okay uh, so in this one we are focusing on the people's safety first that you know we have to keep people safe and we are going to you know uh, find a site where we can keep, keep people safe we will be you know finding the some first aid where we can find some first aid how the bureau uh, safety team evacuation team will be there you know if you have to keep the people work so this will be the first thing then there is going to be second thing make your team okay so, so one thing that you will be focusing of the who will be the part of your incident response team so you know this will be your emerging you know, uh, many time it is also called the ERT. Uh, so I remember I used I am taking the different different uh, your sessions as well. So I remember particularly in the CYSA plus they are mentioning something like this, right? ERT NIST framework as their basic framework over here. 
so when we are talking about this uh, you know we are talking about this one so we have it we have the emergency response team who will be the part of this you know what roles should be assigned to them what will be the responsibility of your incident response team right and then you know how to make the decision and then you know uh, escalate those things that is going to be the part over there okay so mostly in the you know, anisa when we are talking about this thing in anisa we are you know these rules they have been written by the health and safety and security services with the assess you know with the assistant of your business continuity manager okay how we will be making sure that your business continue plus people safety is also the first so you will be writing those kind of a thing but if you have a small staff right and in your building there is only the it it assistant manager so with technology uh, uh, technology or information services running in that one so you will be using their help to write these things and then work with them this thing okay then what you require is the planned procedure okay so you require an incident response plan so there should be a detailed procedure that what you need to do so you how you will be evacuating the staff and incident in there you know, uh, from the incident place where will be the location so you required a whole plan that should be in there so you have to many time work with the external services uh, and the emergency services that is out there plus you have to think about the you know, in the plan you will be thinking about communication that if your you know communication services are down what are the method of communicating which method you can take do you are you going to use some satellite phone or something like this right so you know keep you know uh, those kind of a thing also you'll be keeping in mind so you have to work with the you know multiple time with the external services as well and you have to you know coordinate with them for getting you know handling the incident over there so this is a very basic you know i just want to get you in the framework mindset of a framework how these things they work right so after the incident not always we are going to talk about the your you know uh, information information security uh, usually most of you guys will be familiar with the plan incident response you know eradication you know uh, the recovery those kind of these steps but this is also there you have to focus on the people's safety as well now second which is again most commonly used that is going to be the iso iec 27035 which is you know uh, your information security incident management so it has been described into the five phases that what you need to do so first is plan and prepare okay so you have to establish you know, uh, or, you know what you have to do is you have to establish in your management policy so how you will be you know forming a team who will be the part of the team so you have to plan for these kind of a thing over there then there is going to be the your detection and the report right so if someone has a spot where if someone has a spot something they are going to report it that particular event because that event might turn into the incident so you might be detecting one event and you will be saying that it might turn into the incident in future so if someone has detected these things they have to report them before it turn into the incident okay so there is then after there that there is going to be the assessment and then you will be taking the decision so if there is any incident okay that has happened so someone must go and assess that situation that whether in fact it is an incident or not and then there is going to be the your response part so once we are pretty much sure that this is going to be the your incident then you have to respond to it so it will be including the phases like containment eradication recovery and forensically acquiring the your you know uh, forensically acquiring the clues from the your different different devices gather the evidence forensically gather the evidence from the devices wherever things seem appropriate and then in the end there is the lesson lesson means what lesson you have learned from this so you know although this one and the nist one is almost similar okay so what lesson you have learned from this incident what things goes well what didn't work 
how you know quickly you were able to identify that there is an incident how quickly you were able to respond to that particular threat all things you know you will be assessing after this thing right so this is going to be in there itself now third one is going to be your uh, computer security incident handling guide from the NIST SP 861 and as I was telling you guys that you know uh, usually uh, almost in twice or thrice a year I am have you know, once in a month or twice in, uh, in two months at least I am having one CYC session and in there you know the you know, they have made the incident response guide based on this whole NIST SP 861 and there you know they have a particular diagram which is starting with the prep phase okay going into the detection and analysis phase and then this containment eradication recovery and then the post incident thing so in this one what they have doing is in this detection and analysis and containment these things they are kind of a circular one okay so you keep doing these steps again and again okay so you remove something then again you start checking that whether you know let's say a very simple example in this one okay uh, okay let me just start with the very first thing first is the preparation phase so again i think i don't need to tell you what will be the preparation preparation will be who will be the part of the you know your team how the communication should be going on what you know uh, who will be the member member can consist remember member can consist your people like different managers hr someone from the hr from the legal team even from the pr team as well let's say that there was a data breach okay now you have to might be you have to notify the press so how the statement is going to be you need to be you know you need to have someone from the legal team as well which can tell you that you know what is you know what you are doing is good or not where you are going you know uh, off the track so all that kind of a thing should be in there so someone should be warning you regarding the same you know so you should be having the team should be containing the someone from the legal team as well right and hr and different manager will be there because they know people well okay who can help who cannot okay plus in the communication there is a level of escalation as well means you know uh, there is going to be the first is on site there was a first responder person who responded to the incident first now it will be escalating there will be a chain of command with whom you can share the detail and with whom you cannot you will be having a jump kit a jump bag which i say okay this is incident response kit people call it and i call it the jump bag so what it is it is going to contain uh, phone numbers contact detail out of the box contact you know uh, how you'll be contacting them because your official communication might get compromised so what you want is if you are suspecting that your traditional communication ways are compromised so what you are hoping for or what you are trying to do is you are trying to go and you know communicate with someone in out of the band ways you know uh, just some and you know let's say that over the signal you are calling someone or telegram you are using for you know to communicate with someone so that kind of a thing it will be having plus with whom you can share the detail with whom you cannot share the detail it is going to be in there then what you have second is the detection and the analysis if you know how to detect it analyze same phases like last time right so you will be saying that you know incident happened you are going to verify it you know, first detect any alert you know which can or event that can generate you know, become an incident in future detect them analyze them give your judgment whether it is an incident or not and then there come the things like the containment eradication and recovery and when i was talking about the cycle between do, these two phases what was that let's say that you know you were having one endpoint and it got infected with a malware okay it got infected with a malware and what will happen now is as it is infected with a malware uh, you are trying to first contain it you know if it was a part of a network you will be removing it from here then you will try to eradicate it you know remove this malware file from here and all the dependency file from here and then you will start making the recovery what files has been affected you know download them from the your backup and all that kind of thing and if you are sure that okay this machine goes good right again what you have to do you before you 
introduce it back to the network you again start doing the detection and analysis that okay any residue of the malware is there or is it working properly or not if you again find that something is still going on then again you will start with this phase containment eradication and recovery you might have to install a whole new operating system in there that you know you goes ahead and work with this and you know completely i'll start again doing the same thing so you know in the cloud as well you will be doing the same you will be loading the new you know you create, and in the cloud this part is much easy because for the recovery if you want to go for a backup you have the cloud based backup from there you can instantly go ahead and install the new thing you have the your image store right the storage from there you can quickly you know create a new vm new endpoint and start it and then you know again keep analyzing these things over there and then there come the last thing is post incident your activities again uh, in the end you generate something which we call llr lesson learn report what you have learned from this does our you know anything new any new thing that you have learned new way or our policy that we have created are those working you know perfectly fine or not was something there which was not working properly anything that we need to change what we have learned how we could have made this you know thing uh, more user friendly or you know how we can have contain it much better so all those kind of thing is going to be the part of this particular scenario over here that how these things are going to be in their post you know post incident so you know if we start deep diving into this one we can have each phase separately like we can have cloud ir preparation where what you will be doing you will be start uh, you know looking for the very uh, specific things we can say okay uh, so what we will be start doing on to this okay in the preparation phase you know if i just nitpicking these things what will be the communication analysis start documenting you know documenting thing start training people evaluating it what process policies should be applied over there right so you know and what things are going to impact my uh, preparation phase what is what is my clouds sla service level agreement uh, key questions like where the our data is stored okay how i can get the access to that what kind of service we are using either i am using infrastructure as a service platform as a service so what i am do using that is also going to affect the things then for detection and alert we will be having some alert services validation you know services we have to define scope all these types of things you have to do so each phase can be elaborated of what you want and how things are going to be in there and remember one of the most important part of your incident respo response is mostly you know uh, omitted by your most of the organization that is last step learning and improving you know this one post incident activity so you know this is a very specific uh, you know, in the nist when you will be reading this part they give one particular statement there the statement is reading something like that one of the most important part of incident response is also the most often omitted means most of the organization they do not go for this activity right which is learning and improving so each incident response team should get together and reflect that if you have find some new threat or how you can improve your technology and what lessons you have learned so this thing is most of the time omitted by most of the people so you'll be talking about you know what you have done so this is these are the some of the established framework which you can use in the your cloud itself right so these are the few things that what we uh, or anyone is going to be started with so first part okay now we will be jumping into the second thing in this one in the security operation that is your how logging and monitoring it work in your cloud because you know uh, you, most of you will be familiar with the traditional way of doing it right logging and monitoring so how logging and monitoring is going to work in the your cloud so first what we are going to consider is that let's just jump into the next slide uh, okay logging in the cloud now 
we all know logs are very important part as i was telling you in the very beginning that how i am going to get the insight into what is happening in my cloud through the logs only right so you know we have to properly you know uh, when we are creating the architecture of the cloud we are properly creating the architecture so we have to think about how we are going to get and manage the your logging monitoring of the cloud as well so we will be just going ahead and going to implement the different different you know, we have different services like if i just scroll ahead like for the you know in the different vendors we have services like aws cloud trail watch monitor service log analytic workspace where you can collect the logs and work with the logs query the logs right these kind of a things we are having as well now logging is going to be the very important part of our uh, you know cloud infrastructure and from the security perspective as well so what we are going to do uh, what you are requiring for so first is you any users okay so one is the cloud service provider one is the you know your cloud consumer so if that consumer is doing something in the cloud let's say that i am going ahead and creating a vm this should be generating a log i am starting this vm so this should be generating a log even i am logging into the your you know aws platform or azure platform this should also be generating the logs and you should be having the logs who initiate any action who created the policy who created anything all these things should be having these kind of the you know generating the logs because they are going to give us the insight that what is happening in the cloud then what you are actually doing what you have to do in the cloud we face a different kind of a challenge that we have to collect the logs from the different different kind of environment and many of the places could be like this where your you know traditional logging cannot be available like you know i cannot expect the host level monitoring where uh, i hope most of you have heard about the serverless computing okay or uh, even in the well, uh, okay but still uh, serverless computing so there is uh, no way that i can get the host level log from here right so we will because we are more focused on writing some application over here so we have to find some alternative log method for these kind of this uh, environment like in serverless deployment we are very hardly going to see some system log so you know of the underlying platform where we are running that code so what because that particular underlying platform could be used by the multiple other you know uh, users as well so we cannot kind of you know uh, go ahead and get the proper log from there so what we have to do we have to uh, be more you know robust in the writing the code you know so that we through the right code we can get the some of the application logging for ourselves so you know we have to we deal with the serverless environment there is going to be the container services right there is you know different service like pass so in the pass again you know i cannot get the exact one but there are different solution that is provided by cloud service provider like if i'm talking about in the past there is the web app service in the microsoft azure and if you want to get bit of a insight what kind of activity is happening in your web app there is going to be the one service which is the application insight okay application insight so this will give you the you know idea into the your whole traffic what kind of traffic is coming at what time your traffic is on the peak when you are getting the low from which region you are getting the traffic that kind of a detail you can get from these places so that thing should be you know you should be able to collect log from the different kind of log from the different different places itself now ideally any cloud customer should be able to access the log of their own activity in the platform via the api or any other mechanism so you know if you know they have to get those logs and include it or use it in some of their alerting services right so they if they are uh, they are having their own logging service they want to collect that log ideally the users should be allowed to collect the your 
logs from the different different you know ways different ways should be there that how they can get the logs mostly you will be saying you are getting the logs via the apis so how logging it is adapted onto the cloud over here so first of all there you will be finding many uh, you know some i would say unsupported traditional entity like ip address so why i'm saying this is the you know your unsupported traditional entity so there could be a scenario that same ip address could be used by the multiple services okay now it will be hard for you you know the traditional logs which is based on the ip addresses this is not going to work as it is in the cloud as well because one ip address can be used by multiple ip uh, multiple other services as well so how you are going to identify them then we have container kind of a service as well right we have container and the serverless environment we are where we are completely unable to recognize the ip address associated with any of the service because you know we have the kubernetes container and you know there is that completely different network mechanism and same ip address can be used by the multiple other you know virtual services that is present over there so the traditional things like ip addresses are not going to make any sense but your cloud service provider should be giving you some mechanism through which you can identify what is happening with the different different services itself might not be the ip address in the traditional way might be you are using something like nat inside there you are applying some nat or other services or some uh, uh, your resource id number or service id number which is being used okay which will be telling you which id was using or which service or which resource was using this particular service at a very specific time then second thing offloading the logs so there are many services because what is happening cloud is changing pretty much rapidly things are happening at a fast rapid pace over there so you you might need to go ahead and you know offload those logs from the cloud and store it somewhere itself right because you know uh, things are changing pretty quickly over there so it might be just you know few days uh, within few days your logs could be override okay so you need to offload them and store it somewhere itself now when you start doing something like offloading so if you start you know let's say that if from the cloud i start offload my logs onto my on prem okay onto my on prem data centers so there could be different costs associated with it, like network bandwidth costs associated with how much data storage data that you are taking that much or you know there is better solution that you start getting those logs into the cloud but in the cloud as well there will be the cost that you have to pay to store your data onto the cloud how much space you are getting and all that kind of thing we have to think about over there as well right so this is going to be over there now some of the services that is going to be you know how you have we have implemented the logging and monitoring in the cloud so when we are talking about logging and monitoring of the cloud so some of you will be familiar with the azure as well uh, uh, okay to be honest i am not that much familiar with the gcp only know very basic things in the gcp so in the aws and azure if we are talking about them there are the different services that can be used like AWS Cloud Trail, AWS Cloud Watch, right? And in the Azure, we have the Azure Monitor service. And if you have seen the log and tick workspace, so I will try to show you these kind of thing. But bit towards later part, first I want to discuss security as a service. Then as a whole, I will be showing you this whole thing that is over here, right? So what we have is the AWS Cloud Trail. What it is? It is a service that is going to enable governance, compliance, and even operational auditing and risk auditing of your aws cloud right so with the cloud trail you can log continuously and monitor continuously and even retain account activity that is related to you know any action of your aws infrastructure right so what is happening over there how things are happening you can do those kind of a thing with the aws cloud trail as well okay and then you can forward those things onto the cloud watch as well so which will be storing it on you know uh, so the cloud watch is native log service okay that is embedded in the aws and its primary capability is for monitoring 
and performing and even it can do the auto scaling as well so it can you know get multiple stream of log from the different places like for instance cloud trail takes the output and these output become input for the cloud watch right and through that you can you know get whole idea what is happening over the you know in there in the cloud so that kind of thing is also available on to the same your aws and then there is the uh, your azure so in the azure i will be showing you bit a uh, few services like monitor and log and tick workspace so i remember i think around uh, last month i was having one sentinel batch for so from there i am having one thing stored in my log and tick workspace i will be showing you that but first i will be defining security as a service and then we will be you know uh, seeing all the security as a service offering at once because these aws card you know uh, logging services and all these all are the part of your security as a service over here right okay so security as a service when we are talking about this so just like you know yesterday we were talking about database as a service so same when you start providing security services in the cloud you know via the cloud it will you know start we start calling it the sec aas right security as a service okay now when we are talking about the security as a service it is the feature of your you know um, all the security features which you are providing through a cloud computing service so what it has it has the you know combination of wide variety of different kind of the technology right and which we will be calling what can be called your security as a service we are going to define some criteria for that so your security product or solution they need to be delivered via the cloud service for example like i was talking about collecting the logs in the cloud then you know like you will be having sim tool alerting capability you start giving sim it's okay sim is becoming a bit on the higher side a simple deploying a firewall okay firewall is a security service so when i start delivering firewall features over the cloud okay fly firewall security through a cloud that we gonna become your security the service your simple anti-malware services okay so i think many of you right now in your organization is using anti-malware which is working as a cloud services nowadays edr solutions we have you know okay different solutions like microsoft 365 as well which is giving you the you know different kind of the solution as you know, uh, services as a uh, security service as you know, in the through the cloud now when you have to define this remember what you have to do is uh you know this must fulfill the nist sp800145 so guys you remember i was telling you in the recap that today i will be mentioning it so here this is the part so before you know you can call it that this is a security as a service they must fulfill this you know nist standard 800145 and if you remember this was having the five essential characteristic that was the your uh, one was the your broad access network second one was your rapid elasticity then there was the resource pooling then there was the your on demand services and on demand self service and then there was the your i think majored right so when any security service will be fulfilling these things you are going to call it that the it is security as a service mm -hmm. means security services are being provided as the your cloud service over here now security services are going to have some of the benefits as well so first thing is i think you know we can easily say that it is flexible in de deployment so uh, i am having the you know uh, in infosec train we are having something like the uh, one course which is microsoft sentinel and when we are defining the sentinel i always started with something like this this is a cloud based sim solution right now benefit of having something like this is 
Now, I don't need to go ahead and deploy some server in my organization, create whole network, give permission, install agent, and you know, create a whole infrastructure for that. I don't need to worry about that. Quickly to collecting log in the cloud, I will be deploying one service, which is log analytic workspace. With that, start you know directly connecting the connector deploy your service and start you know rather than uh, deployment process become much easier in the cloud right so it is giving us first of all you know flexibility to work how things are going to be work and all those kind of a thing that is going to be working over there then intelligence sharing benefit of cloud means you know because cloud is working with the multiple tenants and they have their own threat intelligence services running right microsoft has their own threat intelligence service so if they learn something in the one you know there are it work on the multi tenancy remember we were talking about multi tenancy in the iso definition of cloud yesterday so in the multi tenancy there are multiple user for the same public cloud now if in this users there was a some kind of a unique attack and you learn something new here you know, on this one same knowledge can be applied for all of your you know users over here so sharing of that threat intelligence gives you a great benefit on the cloud right now again uh, expertise and staffing can sometime be in the benefit and in some of the you know sometime it could be in the issues as well okay so many you know, organizations what they do is they struggle to employ you know to train and then retain the security professional across the different you know relevant domain expertise so what will be happening you know uh, this can be you know uh, what we can say due to the limitation of local market high cost of specialty and balancing the you know day to day need task or high rate of you know attackers innovation so in here you know in the cloud what you will be having when you'll be working your cloud environment become easy so it will be easy for people to train people from the different places can work together right so many time you know uh, due to the physical location earlier what we used to have you have to come on to the physical location right now uh, no one has think that uh, thought about this that your SOC centers will be your people who are working in the SOC. they will be working from home but it become possible all during this pandemic so what we start having we start having some flexibility right expertise is start coming you train your candidate you know, so they can take uh, or do their work from any location now so cloud give you this kind of a flexibility as well in the security the services plus it is cost effective and it is scalable as well like i remember you if you start having a lot of logs and in azure we are having log analytic workspace so I keep collecting the logs over here. I just have to pay the, you know, pay for this. I'm, you know, in your traditional methodology, if I would have some physical system, so what I would have worried about, okay, uh, first of all, we start collecting logs on this some memory which we called war. Write once, read many. Okay. So when I'm storing in this one, if I start running out of the memory, I have to put in some papers, you know, uh, purchase new memory and then, you know, establish that whole thing. But all that thing become quite, you know, as I was saying, flexible and easy cost and effective and scaling become easy in the cloud. So these kind of a things are there. Now, what kind of the services are provided by the you know, security of services on you know, what are the different categories of security of services? there is iem part so as i was telling that there is azure ad okay in azure active directory there are multiple feature like uh, conditional access policy your identity you know uh, azure identity protection privilege identity management multiple things we have key management service like key vaults okay we have ddos protection we have security assessment service so you know what we have many cloud even aws azure they have the you know, they give you the option to perform the security assessment vulnerability assessment on your endpoints your you know like sql servers on those kind of places okay so you will you will be able to perform security assessment easy business continuity and disaster recovery casby solution cloud access security broker which can work as you know your proxy uh, you know it can you know work as a proxy for your security apply some security policies for you we have web security gateways we have web application firewall WAF, you know in the aws as well 
you can deploy the WAF in Azure as well. You know, they have their own WAF which you can create and deploy and it will protect you against all the application based threats like your you know uh, SQL injection and all the you know uh, it also have option to customize your own rules as well. So these features are available over there. Okay, we have email security solutions. We have IDS IPS solution nowadays. Okay, based on the cloud sim solution like I was telling you that Microsoft Sentinel is a sim tool plus firewall. So many third party firewall plus traditional firewall from the AWS and Azure that is also available as a security as a service in our cloud itself, right? So these are the some of your different categories of the security as a service now before we start jumping into this you know, second part of this you know today's session i would like to take you guys on to the uh, my portals first of all i will be taking you to the one portal here so this was a place uh, you know collection of the logs so i was talking about that log analytics workspace and all uh, so in here if we will be looking into the some services this is a log antic workspace where i have collected different different logs so if i will be taking you to the logs over here so you will be able to see you know, actually i was i have connected this thing and if you will see there is going to be some query history so for the guys who is new here uh, last week i have conducted another webinar on the Custo query language KQL. So in Azure, if you have to query the data from log analytic workspace, you have to work, you know, use a query language which is called Custo query language. So how to work with it, you know, you can type your query over here and you know start refining the query, start looking for the events or anything. So in here, when you will be looking in the log management, I will be having the different different tables, alerts, audit logs. Azure activity, Azure diagnostic event, heartbeat, performance, sign in logs, sys logs, users, right? So these kind of a things are going to be in there. Like if I will be going with this sys log, okay. And okay, I think I have to actually set some custom date over here. And I have to go all the way up to the, I think April to this time and run this one. So it might take something. So I'm going to have some logs over there, syslog based thing. So I can, you know, further on that, I can run some of the things over there. So you can see different, different syslogs I am having over this place. So I keep collecting the logs and there are the different, different syslog base here, logs that I can find in my table over here. So this is going to be there. There is going to be the users, uh, some of these, logs here like common security logs okay and you know we are going to have some hunting queries that i have created security alerts you know threat intelligence indicator is also there so i was working you know although i have deleted the sentinel service right but i am still having this threat intelligence indicator over here which will be which will be having multiple threat intelligence indicator in the same time period if you will see different different threat intelligence i have collected logs i have collected okay uh, user entity behavior analysis was there so behavior analysis i would have performed so different different things are going to be in here so this is my threat intelligence that i have gathered so these are the one thing one kind of a log not only this one uh, there should be something like a demo log page okay so just to practice, like I was telling you last week, I was doing the KQL based uh, your, uh, we were doing a KQL based your webinar. So in there, uh, I was also again, Microsoft give you this demo logs page. So here, if you will be seeing on the left hand side, these are all the tables. So which is containing the different, different kind of a log. So here you will be seeing, there is going to be the hundreds of different, different kind of the logs that you have collected over here w3c ias logs network performance monitors security and audit based logs some security center based logs service logs so different logs so you have multiple ways of collecting the logs 
okay so this is the one thing so i was having this uh, particular webinar and these were the log analytic workspace uh, log demo logs which you can use so we have the you know for collecting log this is here but with this we have one more service which is the my monitor service so this monitor service when we are talking about the azure monitor service so what it can have it can show you the matrices for the different azure resources means cpu uses disk if i will go in the matrices i can get you know if i will be selecting any resource uh, it can give me the charts and table of cpu users disk matrix and all those kind of thing in the monitor itself what i am interested is that there is going to be the activity logs okay now this activity log it is going to you know, get all management activity that is happening in azure it will be having like you know if someone goes ahead and you know create a vm start a vm start stop a vm it is going to contain all of them and right now you know my time span is very less so i cannot see a whole heap of a thing so if i will change and hopefully the logs are still there else you know it will be you know i think unable to find anything so you can have the different different kind of activity logs in this particular part okay plus you will see that there is going to be the options like application insight okay so uh, here application logs virtual machine related uh, your matrices are going to be in there so application insight will be giving you the application logs and all those kind of thing so let me just refresh this page okay so right now it is not showing you a lot of a thing but we are going to have such kind of a thing as well so we will be having some settings here through which we can you know because my subscription actually ended over here so i am unable to see all these kind of a thing but we have this monitor service so what i am going to do is i am going to jump into the another one uh, this is my another account uh, let's go here so in this monitor service you can see application insight from the container i am having option to get the visibility and the performance and health of my you know container vms networks i can have net you know matrices and i can have the logs as well different logs that what we were talking about and i can create alerts on the basis of those particular logs so you know i can create different alert rule over there that if for this particular environment like some let's say someone perform i'm running a particular vm which i am considering it should be running in all time no one should stop it if someone try to perform a stop you know uh, the do the things like stopping that machine it should be instantly giving me the alert so those kind of alerts i can create based on my matrices based on my activity logs i can get these kind of a idea over here okay so if i will be going with the last week and apply this thing it might give me something over there last week first 14 item and you know might give me some of the operations over there so you can see generate recommendation new recommendation deallocate virtual machine health event updated create or update a virtual machine write guest configuration assignment these kind of a logs i am having constantly over here right so i can use these things there is going to be the option of forwarding my sign in logs and different kind of logs so all those sign in logs you will be finding under the azure active directory so we will have the different options in here which we can certainly use now in security as a service there is your azure firewall which we can search and one of the service like sim service that is going to be sentinel in here and one of the sister service security as a service is going to be this microsoft defender for the cloud so this is also going to be the part of this one over here so it is going to assess your security infrastructure how your security infrastructure how your security posture is how much secure you are where you are not secure this is my secure score which is quite low okay so i can connect my different cloud solution here as well like aws and gcp and it will based on the api calls from there it will be going ahead and try to tell you that this is you know a kind of a place or from here you will be going ahead and uh, you know uh, you will be going ahead and 
this is your security score how you can improve it this will be giving you suggestion okay how much uh, regulatory compliances you are following so give you the idea regarding that like here if you will see i have implemented iso 27001 nist sp 853 how much compliant i am you know how much standard you know, uh, checks i have cleared or not those kind of things i'm getting onto this part this is another security as a service which is assessing my security of my whole cloud infrastructure how it should be combined how it should be done right giving me the whole idea regarding the same so these are some of the examples of your security as a service that what we have right now uh, we will be moving into the second part of this that is going to be the next thing is managing the cloud security and risk so we will be starting with this part and in this part we will be talking about in you know, things like the enterprise risk management so what is that we'll be talking about you know, uh, what are the our governance concern what are our primary cloud administrative concern and all these kind of things erm are uh, just a overview although we are not going to have the time to you know uh, go and explore all the things at once but yes we will be starting with the some place here you know, itself so uh, let me just start with the your understanding of uh, your governance risk and policy so first okay so let's just start with this particular part so let's just start with the your you know we are going to talk about first of all our primary cloud administrative concern so you know what we generally are you know, going to say is that there is going to be the four primary concern for so as we were starting so there are the four primary concern that is going to be oh, well, primary administrative concerns in our cloud first is going to be your governance second enterprise risk management third information risk management and fourth your information security although you can directly say that information security is the direct implication of your you know or a result of your information risk management because you find some risk then we are talking about the security itself right so what are these things so first we will be starting with the cloud governance itself so usually there is a saying that you know your cloud governance it begin with establishing the decision maker and separate you know, creating a separation between your stakeholders shareholder and your senior management right and when you are jumping into the cloud so you know there is one more thing so you know um, whatever habits you have as an organization they are going to get amplified in the cloud let's say that you are working in an organization which is very disciplined right you have proper policies processes defined and everyone is following that and on time properly you are following auditing is happening and you are that so if you are a very well disciplined organization before consuming the cloud services you are going to benefit from the cloud computing more and more right because there is going to be a lot of tool to help you out now if you are a poorly disciplined organization which is very hardly can keep up with the you know policies process and all those kind of thing so your un, you know indiscipline is going to increase exponentially onto the cloud itself because there will be a lot of thing to manage and you will be never going to manage them one thing will be connected with the other other leading to the another one so these things are going to make you more and more indiscipline in the cloud so when we have to implement the cloud cloud government when we are talking about the cloud governance first thing is the policy so policy is the one of the most important thing in the cloud governance so here you are going to define what will be the you know your expected you know code of practice and behavior you can define in the clear language that what thing should be followed you know what things are going to be considered lawful okay 
which things uh, which policies are enforceable over here okay what you have to do how you have to follow so that you have to define it then second there is going to be the processes so processes are again one of the important life kind of a lifeline of your cloud governance so these are the repeatable ways in which things should be accomplished okay that are imperative to the success of your organization so for your you know uh, success of your organization there should be a set of you know repeated ways that how you should be doing any particular thing so that is going to be the process and we should be applying that then there will be coming your different different kind of the internal control so you know if you have read about the internal control NIST defined a whole sleuth of uh, you know different different kind of the your internal control there are physical control administrative control technical controls right so you know um, there are controls like deterrent a simple one you know i remember this in one of my certification exam there are deterrent control as well so in the deterrent control what is this you know putting some kind of a warning sign in front like what is happening you know beware of dog that kind of a thing so to handle the cloud governance you are going to require the you know these three are going to be the pillar in the cloud governance then there is going to be the your erm although i will be discussing erm bit in depth in one of the slide so just to get you the overview is why we are doing the erm is we want to determine what is the my organization risk you know what is the overall risk for my organization right so that i can find out you know uh, determine the risk tolerance capacity of the organization itself that you know how much risk we can tolerate how risk is going to affect us which resources which so you know which services are prone to the different different risk this is something that we have to take care of then third which i was talking about was your information risk management now when we are talking about the information risk management this information risk management can have in you know, in the uh, there could be information in the different different forms right there could be your files you know paper based file that we generally have you can have that kind of the paper based information you can have technology or any other service based information as well this also going to include the data not only the data if there is a metadata okay that also going to be important part as well even you know of the information even your raw zero and one so i we know all the data goes on to the zero and one raw data zero and one this can also be very you know this telemetry kind of data can be very important as well because it can give the insight knowledge regarding your organization if someone implement machine learning to understand what kind of data it is it can give a detail about your organization itself so not only a simple data you know process data but metadata your telemetry data you know random zero as one those things can also be valuable insight about your organization itself not only that your intellectual property ip which we call right so ip you know that kind of the information as well that is also the part of your information risk management so you will be talking about the different patents copyrights trademark trade secret that you should be talking about like one of the world highly secure trade secret i think is the coca cola right so if you have heard about that that two people know the uh, you know that secret of how to make cola and they are never allowed to travel in the same plane right so that kind of uh, you know stories and you know, rather than stories those are the policies right that has that's been in the place over there for working over there now finally there is going to be the information security so as i have already uh, i was talking about this information security that uh, this is directly tied to your informational risk management that is there that the information risk that you have identified how you are going to mitigate them so you know what you are going to do you are going to apply some of the controls to you know uh, different kind of control to 
handle or tackle those particular risk so there is going to be the different different type of the control okay so uh, you know that is the one thing you know uh, well one thing that you have to think about okay now there is going to be a different different type of the control and if you have to select which one is going to be good for you right now when we are talking about the, this kind of the scenario uh, you know we we are going to have an array of the different different control it also going to you know there could be the control like physical logical administrative control uh, and we can think of it being in a timeline related to the risk right when actual threat has happened okay preventing the incident detecting the incident correcting the incident then recovering from the incident and then using the compensating control so uh, you know these controls will be one after that so first we will try to prevent anything from happen then if it happen we try to detect if we detect it we try to you know uh, kind of correct that particular incident means reduce the impact of that thing then recover from that and then you know giving the whole compensating control so when we are talking about the security so we have to think from the point perspective of you know a different stages that first try to prevent it if it has happened try to detect it as early as possible then start you know correct them okay reduce the impact of that recover from that and then use some compensation you know, control as well so that is whole going to be the part of your information security now what we will be doing we will be talking about some of the governance framework and again those governance framework we are not going to you know create something new again so there are well established governance framework that are in there so there is going to be the your first one that we are going to consider is the iso 38500 which is governance of it for the organization so what it generally do iso ic 388 or 38500 is it provide the guiding principle from member of governing bodies of the organization so those governing bodies could be you know uh, who can be part of this governing bond bodies your owner your directors okay your partners your uh, what we will say okay apart from this executive manager as well could be the part of this okay now okay these are the few things then there is going to be the advisors okay second thing is this framework can also be used for the advisor to the organization it should be informing them and assisting these governing bodies over there now this will be consist of your executive manager again a uh, member of the different groups which is monitoring the different resources in the organization it could be an external businesses or your you know technical specialist from any different team that is going to be there so that would be the you know, your advisor that is there now what is happening it is designed to work with the your all kind of the organization you know here you know it is actually two things multi state and the all organization it is designed to work with the all kind of the organization you know and telling them that what is their current state and what should be their future state right so you know it could be their current state and whatever is their future state it can work with any of the state that is there then this design it can be used modularly no matter whether you know, your organization is small or big this can be applied in any one of that now the design is to provide the guidance in your organization adaptation of governance so it will be just a guidance that how you should be doing the governance it is not a kind of a mandatory thing it is just a guidance do in the organization adaptation of the governance it is going to assure your stakeholder that if principle and practices which is proposed by the standard if you follow them 
you can have the confidence in your governance of the IT that you have applied. So if you are following these standards, you will be saying that okay, you have the confidence that yes, you are doing things correct. Then there is going to be the Isaka COVID. Okay, so Isaka also has some you know helpful tool in the COVID, which is the Information System Audit and Control Association. Isaka COVID we are going to define. So what it is talking about, it is talking about enact the policy and the standard. So we have talked about the policy earlier as well, that those are the kind of the lifeline over there, right? So what is uh, also it is saying that standard can be also added. So standard is you can select from a range of hardware or a software services technology that what should be applied with the policy right what kind of a hardware or a software service you should be choose now there is going to be the you know uh, one thing uh, okay i noticed this thing here and it should be mostly focus in all of your governance compliance policy that is you know it could you this thing you can use anywhere which is when we are talking about this thing involved management you can use it anywhere why so involving the management from the very beginning of the selection process is important first thing is you know they will be having insight of all the organization risk that what can impact them and second authorization purpose means if you require any support let's say financial support so i'm saying you know you should be applying the you know uh, policies and standard you know you should be selecting the software so you will require budget for that so your, our isaka says that you know you should be involving management from the very beginning so that you can easily get very easily get your budget approved right so that's why involving the management is very important part okay then there is going they're going to be the you know uh, okay so one thing is that you can you know uh, you can have the standards that could be in the selection of hardware and the software services and then there is something that what you are saying that uh, you know evaluate your com cloud computing risk whatever the risks are there you have to work with them then because we are what we are talking we are talking about the standards first we are talking you know we will be having risk we have the range of standard devices a hardware software whatever we have we have involved your management over here so they can approve budget now thing is that you have to evaluate the performance of those hardware and software as well so i have applied a firewall okay or just this is an example let's say i have you know, i have applied some policy for the governance right now I have to see that how much effective that governance policy is. Is it working properly or not? Right. So this is the you know uh, just to check that whether things are working properly or not. So these things you should be focusing on as well. Now let's just go to the ISO IEC 27014. This is uh, you know. I think this should be the last one of the governance which we can talk right now. Okay, so yeah, here is going to be this ISO IEC 27014, which is governance of information security, right? So there are two elements that are you know very pertinent on this one. One first one is scope. Okay, so when we are talking about the scope, this is international standard which provide guidance on principles okay and even on the guidance on principle and even on the process for the governance of your information security how any organization can eva you know, evaluate their security and monitor the management of the information security framework first thing is guiding on principle and process in simple terms that what should be you should be considered what guide it, it will be giving you the guidance what you should consider what is going to happen how you should be monitoring things then there will be the purpose so purpose will be it will be telling your organization that if you are not following some regulatory requirements if there is a failure in the you know, organization information security what kind of a impact you will be having on the organization's reputation so two things are going to be the part of this governance 
ISO IEC 27014 governance of information security over here okay then what we have is tools we'll be talking next is the tools to support your cloud governance okay a simple i'm just saying that what you know in the our cloud governance which thing can support our you know cloud governance is one thing contract what is the contract between cloud service provider and consumer then you know compliance report from the cloud service provider that we you know how much compliant they are what they are doing and all that kind of a thing then there is going to be the your csp assessment over here which will be talking about uh, your you know uh, when we are talking about the csp assessment so they generally give you their assessments right that you know we have been approved by this or we have done this thing uh, third party has gone ahead and assess our security and this is the certification or attestation that what we are having and you can trust us and you know these kind of a things always help you in those kind of a scenario now this is just the few, few tools that i wanted to discuss quickly uh, now let's just jump into the erm frameworks okay so before we start talking about the erm frameworks i think this kind of a diagram you must have seen multiple times if you have seen the enterprise risk management right so there are multiple different different frameworks. before i jump into that one i think you know why don't include this particular part you know because this is one of the very important thing in the risk management so when we are talking about the risk management frameworks there are number of predefined risk management framework which can be used by any organization so what they have to do any organization for themselves they have to develop a risk profile okay for themselves okay so it is going to define in this risk profile that what is their appetite and what is their tolerance so when i'm talking about this risk appetite so it is allowing any organization to understand which risk they are they are able to get involved with means which risk they can take okay so this will be allowing your know, appetite will be allowing any organization to understand that that what risk they are able to get involved with to get you know take a part with right then tolerance tolerance will be telling you that risk in which you are already involved okay uh, how you know it will be uh, tolerance will be allowing you to measure the level of the risk measure the level of the risk with the risk which you already taken right so what level up to which level you can take that risk you know, i can tolerate up to this level so tolerance is going to allow you to measure the level of risk that you are already involved in and the overall completion of the appetite and this tolerance what it is going to give you it is going to be equals to your organization profile risk profile so com compilation of this will be telling you the what is your risk profile right so you can apply the risk profile for your whole business or you know very specific part information system critical systems so whatever thing you want to employ your risk profile is you can select for that particular aspect of it that that is going to work now for the erm we are actually going to look into the two framework one is going to be the nist standard 837 second iso 3100 Eight. so these two things we are going to get involved with in here just take an overview into this one so first we will be looking into the nist special publication 837 so we'll be jumping into this one so uh, again you might have you know, might be remembering this from this one again i remember in my uh, cysa session there is again mention of this thing Again, they have created this whole chapter taking the NIST standard as a basic in the risk management framework. Okay, so we have the different method to go through the process flow in the order to able the manage risk within our organization. So what steps we need to take? So very first, we are going to start with categorize your systems. Okay, so we will be starting with the categorizing of your system and information process uh, so you know categorizing the system 
and the information process stored and transmitted by the system based on the analysis of impact of loss in simple term if i'll be taking in the layman term you will start seeing that what kind each devices or the resources what kind of data they store or process you know critical data okay which is critical for my business continuity for my business objective you will start categorizing the system according to that right what kind of the information system you are processing what kind of a thing you will be processing over there you start getting that kind of the you know categorization you will start doing that then it will be followed by a number of different steps so first is you know going to be your baseline selection you know selecting a initial security baseline i am going to define a initial security baseline these would be the all control of the system that should be applied right so what should be applied over there i should be taking care of those things what should be you know uh, you must have seen that we always have some security baseline that we create from our you know different solutions for the different system so it will be based on the risk that you know that can be possessed to that one so we'll be starting with that then we will be actually going and you know i have defined in my security baseline that what kind of the controls should be used right so once I have decided what kind of the control should be used in the step number two, I will be going on to the step number three, which will be control implementation. Now I have decided that there should be firewall, there should be this thing. Now I will be going ahead and start implementing those, actually start implementing those things over there, right? I'll apply those system, how it will be working with our environment and all those kind of thing. Then there is going to be the assessment of those control right so we will be checking when we have applied or implement those controls whether we have come you know install them correctly and are they you know operating as intended right i uh, if i have applied a firewall or i have applied an anti malware my expectation is it should be blocking all the you know most of the anti mal you know, most of the malware attack this should be filtering traffic properly based on my rule so whether it is working properly it shouldn't be the case that you know i am blacklisting one ip and that ip is able to make a connection over my you know uh, critical system this should not be happening so we will be assessing these things over there now then there is the system authorization so authorizing the system or you know common control based on the you know your determination of the risk to the organization okay to your different asset to your operation so it will be you know there should be an authoritative body which should be approving the different different kind of the systems and control for you and finally there is going to be the whole deployment management means checking the complete life cycle that how efficient this process was so we started with the risk you know there we started with there was a risk we identify security baseline we implement control then we test that whether the controls are working properly or not if control was working properly we authorize them that it should be applied and now here i will be looking into this whole life cycle right that how much effective this whole process was so this is the risk management framework from the nist special publication 800-37 800-37 okay next is going to be the iso 3100-2018 risk management guidelines again these are the guidelines this is not the you know this is not the certification okay this is just the guidelines so no certificate is going to be given to you okay so it help organization to come up which with an approach to address the risk okay second you know uh, first it is not certifiable second it is giving the address approach it is telling you that what approach you should be taking to handle the risk organize you know in your organization right then what it you know, consider cloud means it is very helpful and important that it is going to help you to provide a structure and you know measure the risk 
and management approach that should be in the cloud so it will be you know take giving you whole thing so it will be talking about what kind of a risk could be there you have to think about the architecture how you have implemented what risk could be there and all those kind of a thing is going to be in there then you know it is going to have five elements that is going to include your integration it is going to have the your design how the your things should be integrated in the cloud how your design should be then what should be the implementation okay then evaluate same thing that what we have seen and then ongoing improvement so in here you know this is you can say improvement maturity model kind of a thing right so you integrate thing design thing implement it evaluate start evaluating and again more improve it if something does not working again improve it again start this process so keep doing this kind of a thing now again same thing that you have to include the top management again right so it's the same two regions you have to go there financial support and necessary authorization right so you have to involve your in the risk process you have to involve your top tier as well right so that you can go ahead and talk about the things that you know how things should be and all those kind of a thing over there now we will be talking about the your compliances as well so let's you know from the risk management guides let's just move about towards the compliance objective right so uh, you know compliance has these following objective that you are seeing on your screen first is validate awareness and adherence to the corporate obligation for you know uh, for example the social responsibility within the organization what are the ethical concerns what laws are applicable to us what regulations are applicable to us okay what are our contract strategies and policies that is there then compliance processes it focuses on the description of responsibility so we just talk about the adherence right so uh, awareness and adherence over there so it further does the assessment on the risk and potential cost of your non compliance against cost of achieving the compliance so if there is any law that we have to adherence with so it will be focus on the description of responsibility in this one what we will try to do is we are trying to assess the scenario that if we will be non compliant to the law what is going to happen how much it is going to cost us plus we will be talking about in you know, we where will be comparing this one if we are non compliant how much it is going to cost plus in the compliance how much we have to spend right so it will be giving you the idea that what is going to be in there and finally you know it is going to allow any organization a security perspective and understand how shared responsibility model is going to you know delimit your risk from the cloud service provider and maintain the risk that consumer maintain and your responsibility so it is going to illuminate risk where deficiency exists in simple terms so what is happening awareness and adherence what is your social responsibility if i am working in the let's say my organization is you know what these terms simply means if i am working for example uh let's say in china for example my organization is working there so i should be aware about all the laws that is there plus which laws i you know, is applicable to me what are my social responsibilities over there and all that kind of things then i will be focusing on you know description of those responsibilities right that what will be i will be comparing if i will not follow this what will happen if i will follow this you know how much it is going to cost me and what it is going to cost me and then it is going to talk about the you know illuminate your risk where deficiency so it will be checking where we are lacking right and you know this will be giving you the idea where we are lacking to you know cope up with those compliances and we have to then you know go ahead and work with that so when we are talking about this thing we will be looking into the more on the difference between laws and the regulation 
right so you are compliant to a law or to a regulation right so what will be a law and what will be a regulation so first of all when we are talking about this one so uh, <clears throat> okay so with the law it will be applicable on to the all citizen even a visitor okay so when we are talking about this thing so with the laws those are going those are going to apply on all citizen or visitor let's say someone is visiting india the rule laws are going to apply to them as well so if your organization is working here right you are you know working here the laws are going to apply over here as well okay so well we will be talking about the regulation it will be very specific to the industry or to a very specific practice then laws are mandate in a nation or you know in many of the countries like us you have the you know regional laws you know city laws municipal laws state laws national laws you know federal laws so it is mandate in you know if uh, i am working in the, for example in the texas so i have to follow the texas law okay us law national labor laws and all those kind of a thing while the regulation they can be non government and entity mandate thing right it is not a mandate but a entity mandate thing that is there now violation of the law could be resulted into the loss of your freedom you can go to jail right uh, and possession as well you know they might be you know uh, what we call uh, you know uh, they are going to get your properties or something like that right while in the violation of regulation you will be just getting the fines and you know you will be uh, even uh, what will happen if you violate a regulation it is going to involve some fines and revocation of your membership from that very specific industry practice over there now well with the different compliance we need to understand so that is going to be in those particular part this is the laws and regulation so when you know, comp when we are talking about the industries let let me just switch to the another one right yeah gdpr2 that's right so let me just switch to the another slide so when we are talking about the same industry specific compliance so first one is going to be your hipaa health insurance portability and accountability act which is a kind of a industry standard nowadays right that how someone should be treating your healthcare data how on the electronic you know if you have stored it in some electronic device so how it should be protected and all that kind of thing <clears throat> how you will be handling and protecting the health in you know health related data second is the pci dss which is again becoming a stand, you know industry standard over here so it is you know its objective is if you will be reading its website you will be finding its objective is to enhance global payment account data security by developing the standard and supporting services that educate people make the awareness around the people and effectively implemented by the stakeholder so that is something that is their you know goal you can say now when we talk about the hipaa hipaa we will be finding six control okay so in the six control first is the collection so if we when we are looking closely six control that is going to be implemented over here so we were talking about the uh, first of all uh, six step process so here we were talking about the when we start looking into the hipaa first thing is how to collect the data right healthcare data second is about the use use means confidentiality of data how authorization and consent must be given for the data uses then there is the disclosure disclosure is disclosure make you know, this mandate that if there is a breach of the data breach of information so customer should be contacted asap okay then there is going to be the fourth which is the your access so access is it is related to the you know protecting the access of data who can access the data 
of your data who will have access of the there to watch your data that we have collected then there is the correction means if there is any inaccurate data wrong data about the customer we can repair it okay we can repair that that is going to be the correction and six is the identification okay so identification it has to do with the classification and the notice of a particular type of a data that is there so there is going to be the six of uh, controls in the hipaa when we are talking about the pci dss there is going to be the 12 thing first is that you need to maintain install and maintain the firewall okay so if you are collecting the cloud you know uh, credit card data and the payment related data so you should be implementing firewall install and you know maintain the firewall over there plus all the default password that you were having right so you should not be using them change all the password any vendor data vendor password you should be changing all the default mechanism okay administrative password all of those should be changed then there should be you know protect your stored card holder data means even physically as well you know, physical access to that place or that device should be properly you know your secure okay then you know there is going to be the data that is in encrypt transmission of card holder data means data in transit should be encrypted right so this is the number 4 number 5 this system where we have stored data it should be protected against all anti malware against malware means anti malware should be installed on that particular one then develop and maintain a secure system and the application over here right so you know rather than patching things up you should be thinking this as a whole so how we can create a secure system how we can create a secure solution we should be focusing on that and so again you know these are the pci dss points we have to use the vendor supplied default system protect store uh, and store card holder data encrypt you know uh, data in transition should be encrypted protected against all malware you should be developing the system a whole you know rather than patching things up later you should be creating a whole complete secure environment to use your data itself then on the need to you know restrict access to card holder data by business need to know on the need to know basis you will be giving someone the access not everyone can have access to those system and those places where you have stored the data only on the need to know basis you will be giving someone the access then you should be identify and authenticate access to the system so there should be proper authentication system like multi factor authentication should be enable you know uh, every time someone is logging a proper recognition uh, authentication process should be follow right uh, okay i think oh, i repeated the 7 and 8 step again uh, on this page as well then from the 9 restrict physical access to access to the card holder data so physical hurdle or layer of physical protection should be implemented as well okay then all network resources so network devices that you will be having network resources you will be having collect log from there and monitor them properly regularly test your security system and process means audit should be there on the regular basis okay verification of your security solution is necessary and finally you have to maintain security policy so there should be some security policies that should be applied so these are the 12 elements of your pci dss okay so when we are talking about this uh, you know these are the some of your uh, what i would say industry standard as net specific your compliance standard over there okay now a very small thing that is the cloud audit management so when you are selecting your cloud service provider you must have seen that what they are so you know, 
they are showing if you will be checking their trust center or their pages they will be saying that we are having the SOC 3 certification SOC 2 we are having CSA star you know we are having these are the attestation this is the certification CSA star right so we have these kind of a thing so cloud service model what you know cloud service provider is doing they are making sure that the infrastructure that they have and the services that they provide it actually goes through some audits okay some compliance standard itself so that you know what they are doing as cloud service provider they are taking the responsibility they are bearing the cost and maintenance of all these certification and attestation that they have and so that they can pass it through the consumer that we you know, our infrastructure our services our application they are certified by the third party and they are you know uh, we are providing you a very good service that should be there now what they generally do is they hire the top tier audit firms means they hire some third parties so that to go ahead to just to make sure that everyone can trust them so they hire top tier audit firm to give you know do the assessment of their audit of their organization now you know once this whole thing is done so you know this top tier audit firm they have certified my cloud service provider that you are compliant but still this is customers responsibility to build on that customer you know, particular service so their infrastructure is top notch their services are top notch but it as a customer it is your responsibility to build services on top of that and those services should be also you know in the compliant state so the services that you are creating on your cloud service provider those should also be the compliant and customer is ultimately responsible and accountable for any of the service that is you know, that they are building on the cloud service right so you will be the responsible for the same thing not the cloud service provider so if i am using the azure and i created infrastructure in such a way that you know it has many loopholes okay it is not compliant to the any industry standard i'm not you know like i have i was showing you okay uh, just a quick overview what i was showing you in the my infrastructure was that you know in iso 27001 out of 17 control i am only following seven in nist sp i am following out of 400 i am compliant to 369 right so i am building my infrastructure on the top of azure right but thing is this is my responsibility if something is not up to the mark they are giving me the all good thing but this is my particular concern or design method that i should be properly creating those things over here right so these are the few things that we should be keeping in mind over here right now uh, there is going to be the you know uh, when we are talking about the your legal issues okay so legal issues will be mostly dealing with the your data privacy you know, data privacy concerns right so there are going to be the some of the concern for your data privacy itself right so when we are talking about the data privacy concerns uh, there is going to be the things like when we are talking about this first where is your csp location where it is situated although you are in the virtual environment but still where your csp's physical location is why and then from where you are consuming the your cloud service because in the both scenario different laws and regulation will be working then there is going to be the data subject so data subject is going to be the center of the whole thing means a simple example you know if i would like to give you this some simple example what would be you know your data subject and all so you know let's say that you are you know there are three things there is going to be the data subject there is going to be the you know data processor and then there is going to be the data controller okay three entities are there 
so data subject is let's say i created an account on amazon prime to watch the movies so i am the your data subject now second is the data controller so who is data controller that you know prime amazon service that is you know that prime is my data controller they have all of my data like they have my credit card number my name the do you know, different uh, from what is my address and all those kind of a thing although i have given the consent to them and they can decide that what they want to do with the data where to store it how to use it right how to you know where to store it where to encrypt it how to store it all that kind of a thing is going to be with the data controller so they are controlling it but i have given my consent and then there is the data processor so what they are using for example they are using the aws to store the data and work with the data so that aws which is providing infrastructure to it that is going to be known as the data processor so this whole cloud data privacy it revolve around your data subject so from where the you know if you have collected data about any particular person so where that user belongs to so those rules or those laws are going to be applicable over there right on that physical server location right again what another thing will be important physical server location why we are talking about these things because legal jurisdiction will be applied according to that so if you know my consumer is from the europe right so you will be knowing that that for you know if you want to gather the information about the citizen of europe you need to follow the gdpr right it should be in the you know uh, stored in within the your european union so those kind of a thing will be applied over there right and then again where you have stored where is the physical server location cloud service providers physical server right because again that country law are you know where people are going to you know legally challenge them what laws will be applied so that is again going to be depending on the your so, physical locations as well and one thing that will be impacting these thing that is going to be the treaties and some of the legal framework so treaties between the different different organization like a simple example in the data protection you will be finding that transfer of the data like many of the organization what they do like if i will be talking about some themes like how national th law themes are so one thing that they prohibited is cross border data transfer so you cannot transfer the data out of a very specific geographical location means if i am in india you cannot send a user's data to the us so if you want to send that kind of a thing there should be some treaty between your india and us which is providing same level of the data protection to the user that thing should be there okay so when we are talking about these laws so there are general themes of this laws so there are different kind of the law like sectoral law omnibus law means national laws on the state law or the federal law which you have to follow that is going to be in there right this is the national theme now these laws they are going to provision that you know that require the adoption of some security measures so there should be some you know how the personal data should be protected how you will be protecting someone's individual data that is going to be defined right where to store it how to process it how consent must be given and then you know cross border transfer which i was talking about prohibiting those kind of a thing then data localization law so in the local scenario as well with where you can share the data you have to store it on a you know very specific region what laws will be there if you are not following it what kind of the you know uh, fines will be applied to you and all those kind of thing now if we talk about some of the country or regional data privacy laws so there is going to be the china's cyber security law okay japan's appi category of protected data Russia data protected laws Asia Pacific economic cooperation privacy framework GDPR network information security directive NIS and then you know when i was talking about that 
treaties that if you want to transfer data cross border so this is something you eu us privacy shield so from the both party they allow they have a you know, some set of frameworks rules and regulation that under which circumstances you can change the inter you know exchange the data with each other okay and they are going to provide same level of the privacy laws to the users that are there so if organization who is working in the eu and us you know they can you know be treaty between them is eu us privacy seal which you know in this one every year they have the joint meeting they update the clause of this how you can collect the data but working on the present scenario right now this is the sum of the country law so there could be more laws like in the if i'm talking about the australian region new zealand region there are different laws canada has the different law uh, usa has the different laws in america as well different state like mexico has the different laws and all those kind of thing right so we don't have that much of a time that in this webinar we discuss all these things so if you would ask me there is going to be a lot of the different things that more thing like 1980 OECD, which we can discuss. Uh, there is going to be the different, you know, more example on the data subject, lifeline of the data, how data should be processed. So a lot of a different, different rules, privacy laws are going to be there. So not everything is possible to cover in the two hours of a boot camp here, but I hope I have given you the overview of all the, you know, wherever possible, the different enterprises uh, standards uh, you know iso iec these kind of a overview so if you guys are you know interested so there are you know, multiple books out there which will be talking about the cloud governance erm in the you know your cloud there are multiple videos that you will be finding on the youtube itself which will be talking about the same thing laws privacy erm in the cloud lot of things so you know if you are very redundant on you know i have to gain knowledge there are multiple sources certification that you can gather on the same thing there are you know heap of the array and you know, heap of the data from where we can gather the knowledge 